hey guys welcome to second part of this video on this video I am going to uh, show you how to create a simple um, spring MVC uh, I mean a simple dynamic web project using spring MVC and I'll uh, go through the flow of uh, this spring MVC and I'm going to use the same example that we used um, on the previous video so you can either either create a new project or just uh, change make changes on this one okay so we do not need tester going to delete this one okay and uh, we do not need uh, or we need this one but not in here but um, first of all oh uh, next thing um, you do not need to have your uh, library over here for doing um, simple spring core you can simply do add external jars and it will work okay but anyways uh, our main goal is to create a dynamic web project and now uh, which I'm gonna do it now so the first thing is we start with every of that XML okay so in here um, nothing new so just like servlets we create some servlet tags and I'm going to type everything so I hope you guys do the same uh, at least for a few times then you can start copying okay so inside servlet just the regular stuff we have servlet name and servlet class Similarly, servlet name, URL pattern, so nothing new so far. So URL pattern is usually star dot something. Okay. Well, let me just do STM and I'm telling you guys you, it doesn't have to be STM, it can be JSP. And also STM is not a, a real real extension file. Uh, it's either HTML or XHTML. But what we are trying to do is not let our clients know what kind of technology we are using. Okay, there's nothing called STM. It can be HTML, but um, we'll be using JSP for our pro um, for this example. But they will never know we use JSP, and I'll show you. And I'll, I'll tell you more about this one once we are done with this project. Okay, so Spring name. Uh, sorry, solid name. Usually we do Spring. It can be anything no uh, doesn't matter same name here and here in the class um, so we have the name of our controller class is called dispatcher servlet just like for other frameworks we have our own con like the spring provides its own controller so it's org dot web Serlet dot dispatcher serlet. Oh, oh, I could do that. I, I didn't know that. Okay, this PA dispatcher. Okay, and we need to load this on startup. So let's do load in startup. It's one. Okay, that's it. We're done with web.xml next it's going to be a bin configuration file okay so here we need to create um, a bin configuration file like we did before okay you can either use the same one or you can create a new one um, so I am go uh, I mean I'll just go ahead and use the same one still drag this to my web inf uh, as i told you you can always create a new one no um no problem with that uh yes so this should be inside your web inf okay yep it is and one thing to note here is your name of the name of your bin configuration file has to be whatever you have here dash 
serlet.xml. Remember, guys, it has to be spring dash serlet.xml. If you change this to, for example, hello, your name of your bin configuration file is going to be hello dash serlet.xml. Okay, remember this, guys, this is important. So this is this has to be yes serlet dot xml okay that's why we do not have to pass anything using init parameter if you remember stress then uh, you might remember like how we had to pass stress config file using uh, init parameters but this is spring so uh, it will automatically like get this file which will automate that's why we need to the name is important here okay in here. Um, this is from the previous video nothing new okay um, so okay um, we define this bin that's cool now let me go ahead and create our controller class okay so usually so don't get confused with these two controllers Dispatcher Serlet is a front end con front front controller. It's known as front controller, which is provided by our Spring. But the other controller that we're gonna define is our um, um, the one we created, the one we're going to create. So uh, to make it simple, just think about action classes in case of Serlet. Remember, like how you can have different action classes for different forms, like login action, registration action. Just like that, we will call it controller in Spring. Okay, to make it easy for you, I'll name it Hello World Controller. Okay, and I'm gonna have to change this file as well. Okay, remember, guys, this is nothing but um, an action, but an action class in case of stress, but we call it controller. Okay. All right. Um, so, just like um, action classes in stress, we need to do some extendings and override some messages, like some few things over here. So, your controller class has to extend a controller. Okay, there are many kinds of controller. For this example, I'm going to use a simple one. Um, abstract controller where is this okay abstract controller okay and um, it's not portlet it has to be serlet okay there's there always be two so remember this one this is serlet okay so this needs to override a method it's going to um, which is nothing but handle request internal okay how did I create this I just went ahead and just override this created um, did add unimplement unimplemented method but um, uh, remember this has to be um, it, this is just a method uh, over 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 written method whose return type is model and view uh, got some parameters throw the exception nothing new okay um, We'll stuck with public here, okay? Um, you can change this to request and response. That's your choice, but we're not using it this for now, so we'll skip that part. So here, see, I'm telling you this is returning module and view object, right? So return new model and view. Okay, then take, it can return many, many like five or seven. Maybe I think it's probably eight. Like so many kinds of uh, return types. You can do um, you can return maps and do like so many things. But we usually we stick with this one. So for beginners, just just um, stay stick with this one. So view name. So this will ask you for view name, model name, and model object. So view name is nothing but your um, what should I say success page. 
remember how you have so when you, you, you get a success you forward it to a pace in case of stress similarly you need to like once uh, you get the you process your request you need to so it to you know, the user right so this is going to be your six um, your uh, view page um, just a JSP page so we'll name this as uh, what's we're gonna name this hello page and remember this is a JSP file but we did not say dot JSP okay we do not need to specify um, the extension and this is just a parameter message and this is going to be your value of this parameter so in our case it's nothing but messages okay don't get confused with these two um, let me go ahead and I don't know what's right said it uh, maybe this the key okay I'll just do key okay this is a key and value listen okay now we need to um, add a view resolver um, view resolver class in our something that will understand model and view object okay so here Oh God, this is getting long. Hmm. Let me create a new bin. Okay. So ID is equals to view resolver. And again, guys, they are they are like there can be many kinds of view resolver. It, this is nothing but uh, something that will take your process to um, um, model and view object and um, display it to the user okay so we'll use this class is equals to Okay. Org dot spring framework dot web dot 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 view dot is internal resource view resolver. This is one time activity, so no need to worry about this. So inside um, a view resolver, we define do like there are only two properties in this. So one property is called prefix, and other is called suffix. So property. So first one is prefix suffix okay and its property contain a value okay I think this is getting confusing now but uh, let me just finish this I will explain this again okay value tag okay so what is prefix and what is suffix so once our view resolver gets the model and view object uh, which we pass from here here right this is going to return right so so there are two tags uh, there, there are two properties so first one prefix is going to specify the location of our JSP file remember what I told you hello page is our JSP file right we need to create a page called